Welcome, this is Coincident, and you are watching an analysis of Doom's most infamous bug, the block map bug. Many Doom veterans already know that Doom has a handful of bugs and limitations, and most of them will tell you that those bugs belong in Doom. They are part of the game. Speedrunners will eagerly use them to their advantage, by skipping trigger lines and avoiding traps, by gliding through small gaps that should not be passable, or simply by zapping out into the void and skipping entire maps. I'm sorry to tell you, but the block map bug is not as exciting as those bugs. Quite on the contrary. It is probably the most common, annoying and useless bug in Doom. You may not recognize it by name, but if you've ever played Doom with the original files or any source port with the old compatibility options, you have most certainly experienced this bug at least once. Here's the scenario. There's a shotgunner right in front of you. You have the pistol and a lot of bullets. You get up close and fire. But to your dismay, you see the bullets hitting the wall behind the shotgunner and dealing no damage at all. This was a simplified example of the block map bug. In this video, we will see what created this bug in the first place. Then we will examine how exactly it works in detail. And finally, we will look at strategies to avoid this bug or maybe even use it in our favor. So let's start at the beginning. What is the block map? The block map is a grid of squares that is present in every level. You can see it if you open the map and press the hotkey G for grid. Each of these squares is 128 units large, and the squares are not aligned with anything special. The block map was not created to align things. Its purpose is only one, to help with collision detection. In a 3D or 2D environment, collision detection is the way that things hit each other. It detects when a moving player hits a wall and needs to stop moving. It detects when a player steps on a line that triggers a trap. But most importantly, collision detection is used to check when a bullet, a fireball or a rocket hit a certain target and deal their damage. If implemented incorrectly, collision detection can be extremely slow. Let's take a look at an example. We start in a room with 50 imps. We fire rocket and pause. We can now move the game slowly, frame by frame. At each step of the calculation, the rocket must move forward a bit. But we also have to check if the rocket hits something. So we must compare the new coordinates of the rocket with the coordinates of the imps. But hold on a second, that is a lot of imps. So we start by checking, did the rocket hit this imp? Nope. What about this imp? Nope. What about this imp? Nope. And so on, repeat 50 times. If 50 calculations for one rocket doesn't seem like much, then imagine this. Each of the imps shoots a fireball. We now have 51 projectiles, and each of those needs to check for collisions against all the imps every single frame. This is a computational nightmare. In computer science and engineering, this kind of problem is known for having an asymptotic complexity of O n squared, or in other words, way too slow. Making a collision detection algorithm work fast can be challenging, even with the modern computer hardware that exists today in 2020. Now let's go back in time to 1993 when Doom was first created. In March of 93, Intel released its first Pentium CPU, which had a total of one core, worked at 60 MHz and cost $878. And forget about gamer-grade graphics cards, those simply did not exist back then. But its software still wanted to make their most ambitious project, Doom, run as smoothly as possible. And in Doom, there could be hundreds of monsters on screen shooting all kinds of projectiles, hitting each other and hitting the player. And all of this needed to happen extremely fast. Doom works at 35 frames per second, which means that it has exactly 1 35th of a second, not just to draw the pixels on screen, but also to calculate all of the game logic that happens inside the code. So, for each frame, the game must calculate the new coordinates of each moving thing and check which projectiles hit something and dealt damage. In this example, doesn't it seem like a huge waste to check if the rocket hit that imp over there? What about that one? 
They're not even close. Why would you even check that? And therefore, instead of checking everything against everything for the whole map, its software divided the map into small blocks and decided to do the following. Each moving thing will only check for collisions inside the blocks of the map that it overlaps. With this optimization, the rocket only needs to check two imps instead of 50. The same applies to hit-scan attacks, except that they are instantaneous. So when the pistol is fired, the game creates a line for the bullet, then the game checks for possible collisions, but only in the blocks that the line goes through, instead of doing it for the whole map. Problem solved, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, because collision detection is now pretty fast. No, because this implementation has an edge case which is the cause of the block map bug. Let's look at the same example and take only the bullet and one imp. When the pistol is fired, the game calculates the blocks that the line goes through. Then the game searches those blocks for other objects that the bullet can collide with. The game finds this imp, which is the closest target, and checks if the line intersects with the imp's cross section. This is another optimization. It's faster to check for collisions against two lines than against four. In this case, there is a collision, so the bullet deals its damage to the imp. But imagine that the block map here has a different alignment, which can happen simply by the monsters or the player moving around. Now, the blocks that the line goes through are different. Again, the game searches the overlapping blocks for things that the bullet can collide with. But this time, the game finds nothing, because the imp is inside the red block. The game only considers the objects whose center coordinate is inside the block. Therefore, the collision detection algorithm ignores the imp and the bullet moves through. The same can happen when using the chain gun, the shotgun, the super shotgun, or when using the chainsaw or the fists. Perhaps the most peculiar effect of this bug is manifested when using the BFG. After the BFG ball hits, 40 hitscan tracers are shot in front of the player. It is possible to kill a cyber demon with two BFG blasts, because the cyber demon is a very large target. And if you get close, you might get all the tracers to hit. However, depending on the position of the cyber demon, its cross section can be cut in half because of the block map making the cyber demon a much thinner target. And sometimes that can be the cause for a 2 BFG cyber kill to fail. The same applies to the spider mastermind. In the source ports that fix this bug, it is common to kill the mastermind with only one BFG blast. Note that this bug only happens to hit scan attacks and not with projectiles. If there's a rocket on the edge of a block's line, the game calculates the next position of the rocket given its velocity. And to this bounding box of the rocket, the game adds an extra slack with a variable called max radius. Then the game searches all the overlapping blocks and finds the imp. After that, the actual coordinates of the rocket are compared to those of the imp and boom. So yeah, there are obviously simple ways to fix this bug. One way is to use the same max radius variable to make the hitscan bullet fatter and use all the adjacent blocks to search for other objects. This technique is a bit overkill and can slow down collision detection a lot in bigger maps. A cleaner way is to say that the imp can be in several blocks at the same time. Instead of using just the center, the game could also use the four corners of the imp and decide it is actually in all of these blocks. There are more complex techniques that are used in modern games, where monsters are not just a 2D square on the map. They're actually composed of 3D models with complex hitboxes, and each of them needs to be checked for collisions. As you can imagine, in this scenario, it is vital for collision detection to be very fast. However, in the original Doom, this bug was not fixed. Maybe its software didn't know about the problem. Or maybe they knew and decided not to fix it. I don't know for sure, but I can imagine a couple of good reasons not to fix it. One such reason would be searching more blocks is slower. It is 1993 and it makes sense to prioritize performance and smooth gameplay over having 100% accurate collision detection all the time. 
Also, even if a bullet misses the first enemy, it will continue through, and there's a very high probability that it will hit another enemy behind it. So in many cases, the bullet is not completely wasted. However, this does not work with punches or chainsaw attacks. These attacks are hit scan just like bullets, but they have a very limited range. So if the punch misses the first enemy, it will not hit the enemy behind. And since the player is in melee range, there's a high chance that the player will get hit by the enemy. So this bug is especially painful when trying to punch or use a chainsaw. Finally, we need to ask ourselves, what can we do with this knowledge? Is there any strategy to avoid this bug when playing? Or perhaps we can use the bug in our favor, somehow? Well, for a certain level, the block map never moves. It's always in the same place. So if you want to beat a record speedrun time, for example, or maybe you're just attempting a very difficult challenge, you might need to repeat a level many times over. In that case, it can help you to open up the map, press G to see the block map grid, and look for straight corridors that have a block map line along them. This corridor in E2M6 is an excellent example. In the current route of the UV Max speedrun, you have to run back this corridor to get to the exit, and an army of pinkies faces you from the other side. The best strategy here is to punch the pinkies. If you do so while standing on the left side of the corridor, you will very often miss your punches, lose time, or die. However, if you remain on the right side of the corridor, your punches will hit the pinkies more consistently. So the tip to avoid the block map bug is this. Memorize problematic corridors, know where the block map lines are, and avoid fighting on top of them. But sometimes you will have to. Sometimes the corridor is just very tight, and the block map line goes straight through the middle. And worst case scenario, you may actually have to punch or use the chainsaw. In this case, I have only one recommendation. Try to attack in a diagonal. If you attack in a straight line, that line will go through only one block, and you have a 50% chance of it being the wrong one. But if you choose to attack in a diagonal, the line might cross both of the blocks and always hit the enemy on whatever block its center is located. Another interesting question is, can we use the block map lines in our favor? Well, the lines just make you shoot through things, and it's quite rare to find a case where that's actually useful. I have come across such a case only once, while doing a fast monster speedrun of Zone 300, a custom Doomwad from 2013. The exit of map 9 is located in a corridor that has a block map line through the middle. There are three monsters inside that corridor, a Hell Knight and two Pinkies. When I open the door, the Hell Knight doesn't move and continuously fires at me. This is because I'm playing with fast monsters. If I shoot at the Hell Knight with a diagonal strategy, it will die in three super shotgun blasts, and the two turbo pinkies will run at me. But there is a one-time monster teleporting line by the door, one of the pinkies will teleport behind me, the other one will approach from the front, and at 2% health they will quickly corner me and kill me. So instead of using the diagonals, I intentionally used the block map bug in my favor. I shot at the Hell Knight in a straight line, so that some of the shotgun pallets hit the pinky behind it. By using this trick, the first pinky died at the same time as the Hell Knight, and the last pinky alone was not enough to corner me. In theory, the block map lines can also be used to avoid taking damage from the enemies. Well, not from pinkies, because the monster's melee attacks are not hit scan. They're a special kind of attack that is not affected by the bug. But if you stand on the E2M6 corridor and a shotgunner is shooting you from the other side, that shotgunner will miss most of its pellets and deal less damage on average. Because in this case, the block map line makes you a thinner target. I don't recommend using this as a strategy to survive, because most likely you will also be shooting back at the enemy and missing. So unless you're doing a pacifist run, this is a lose-lose situation. Also, in a real combat scenario, there will probably be more enemies all around you firing shots and projectiles from different directions, and all of the other directions will hit you hard. So if you want to survive, my recommendation is keep running like hell, and if possible, not in a straight line. This video was in part inspired by an old but interesting article. 
The article is called Shooting Through Things, and it was written by Colin Phipps in 2003. There's a link for it in the description. In this article, there's a section called Applications, which explains how, as map makers, we can be aware of this bug. If we pay attention to where the block map lines are, we can avoid making corridors that have a line straight through the middle, so that the bug is less common. Colin Phipps also considered how the block map bug could be used in Doom Deathmatch. A player could move along the lines of the block map to avoid hitscan attacks from other players. I'm not an expert in Doom Deathmatch, but again, it seems to me that you should keep running like hell, and if possible, not in a straight line. The more unpredictable your movement is, the more difficult it will be for your opponents to hit you. In summary, in this video, we have seen that the block map was created to optimize collision detection. We have also seen that the edges of the blocks create a bug that causes hitscan attacks to miss. And finally, we learned that we may fire in a straight line to abuse this bug, or fire in a diagonal to avoid it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and that this information can be of some use. This video was six months in the making. I could have done it faster, but instead I chose to spend the time to go in-depth and create animated illustrations in detail to help explain everything as clearly as possible. In the end, I'm quite happy with the results, and if you also enjoyed this, consider subscribing. I have plans for more analysis videos in the future, and on the channel there are over 100 commentated speedruns, live streams, and other gaming challenges. Be sure to check them out! That's all, folks! See you later.